Good morning. Good morning, everyone. Thank you for hanging out with me on another Wednesday for Watercolor Live. I have another project for you today. So I've got my comments set up. So please tell me hello. And if you are on watching, uh, I have a couple of things to tell you today. And I want to kind of wait till everybody gets on. So it is about 10 o'clock right now. So wait a couple of minutes. But in the meantime, uh, let me see who all is on here so I can say hello to all of you. Uh, Debbie Hedges, good morning. Good morning, Diane. Good morning, Debbie Lewis, Carol, Ginger. Hello to everyone. You know, when you're on here and you're saying hello, you're saying hello to everyone now because I feel like everyone's friends and you guys all kind of know each other and have talked together and <laughs> there's so many familiar uh, names on here now. So it's just kind of like um, a bunch of friends meeting together. Deanna, hello. Velda, hello. Jane, hello. Uh, Carolyn, hello. Velda, Marin, Valerie, Vicki. You guys, thank you so, so much for being with me today. Uh, good morning, Bobby, Michelle. So excited to be here live. Don't make it very often. I know this is a bit of a difficult time, 10 a.m. Pacific time. So I, you know, we do, we do put these on Facebook. So we do keep them archived on there uh, so that you can watch. But I'm always really uh, happy for all of you who can make it and make a point to being on here. I know a lot of you are working and have busy schedules, so I really, really appreciate you taking time to be with me on here. Uh, Jane, it feels that way, getting together with friends. It really does. It really does. And there's so much dialogue. You know, when I go back and look at the comments, there's so much dialogue between all of you. Uh, people's questions, you know, comments, answering questions, just kind of chatting. I just love it. Love it. Love it. Um... Hi, Bonnie from Michigan. Deborah, yes, we are all friends now. Yes, hooray. Across the country, across the world, really. There's so many people that watch from other countries, too. I love it. Elk Grove, California. Hello, Carol Stockwell. Um, okay, you guys, let me uh, show you what the project is today so that you can, I want your input, and I'm going to give you a chance to think about this. And uh, I'm going to give you two options. So I want you to uh, just comment uh, option A or B, and I'll tell you what they are. So we're going to be doing the chairs. Now, I've done all the other three, and I want to get a tutorial in of the chairs so that I have all four foundations on here. So we are going to be doing this tutorial. So now <clears throat> I have done it two different ways because I love the bright colors, which is option A. So this is bright, bright colors. I've got oranges and blues and, and um, bright, bright greens in here. I've put a couple little critters in there too. So this would be option bright, okay? Option bright. Now this one is a little different. This is muted. And I don't normally do projects like this, but I also really, really love this look. And I've used some of the foliage from the new Bible Journaling 2 set. So um, if you like this one, uh, do muted. Just type in muted in the comments. And I am going to um, kind of watch and see uh, which comments get the most. And that's the one that I'll do today because I honestly, I've gone back and forth. Okay, I see one bright so far. Uh, bright, okay, you guys, I can see where the trend is going. That's kind of what I was thinking. And, oh, there's a muted. And I just, I'm really curious to see what you uh, want to see and uh, which one we should do today. And I am going to give both samples away. So I will pick two winners. I'll pick a winner for the muted one and then I'll pick a winner for the bright, bright one. Okay, but before uh, we get going, I got a, a great announcement, a big announcement, big for us at Art Impressions. And you guys will be the first to hear it. We are starting something brand new. It is called Deal of the Day. And we are so excited about this because we are going to put one item on sale every 24 hours. So the sale will run, it will begin at 12 a.m. Pacific, now that's Pacific time because we're in Oregon, and it will run a full 24 hours. And we're gonna put one item 
and it could be from any of our line of stamps. So, you know, we've got a, you know, huge amount of stamps. Could be watercolor, could be uh, interactive, could be girlfriends, could be, you know, crazy animals, could be any of those. So it'll be a surprise every day and it will be hugely discounted. So let me just say that today, starting today, and uh, the one today is a watercolor and it is 50% off. So you will for sure want to check that out. But it will be really fun to just uh, go to the web, go to our webpage every day and just click that deal of the day and see what's on sale. It will be something every 24 hours that will be something new seven days a week. And uh, we've been working on this for quite a while. We're launching it today and we're really excited to offer that to you. So uh, it will be really fun to check that out. And, um, you know, there could be a mystery item one day too. So we've got lots of plans to have a fun with this sale. And, it, you know, it's not just going to be an overstocked item that we're trying to clearance out. These will be current. Some of these will be current. Some of these will be previous releases. But they will all be really um, popular sets that you will want to check out. So check that out. Like I said, the one today is 50% off. There will be huge discounts every day and you will have 24 hours um, to purchase it before a new one comes on the next day. So um, check that out. I think it'll be really fun. We're really excited about it. Uh, okay, one more thing I want to tell you. Uh, our throwback launched yesterday. So that's Kendra, the first Tuesday of the month. She is so good. And she uh, did a little demo of this one. This is our throwback for the month. So what these are, if this is new to you, these are retired sets. Some of them have been retired for years. And you guys have requested that we bring these back. And so we are doing that exact thing because you know we listen to you when you request things. So these are coming back one last time and then they are really, really gone. So we are offering this one time. This one will be available through tomorrow. You also get a uh, little bonus stamp, this one, the little sailboat. So you do get something new and different in this set. Now, if you've already got this set, you've already purchased Easy Project B uh, at your next order and it needs to be before tomorrow at your next order, it can be anything. Uh, just put in the notes, I already have Easy Project B. Please send me the sailboat and we'll send you this free. Okay, so any questions or anything, uh, just, you know, please direct any questions about any of these things to feedback at Art Impressions. Leah is amazing and she will be able to answer all those questions or someone watching will answer those questions. Let me just show you her little project. Isn't this so cute? This is archived on the Facebook. So and it will soon shortly be on YouTube too. I'm not sure if it's on there yet, but it will shortly be on YouTube. So you'll be able to see this tutorial. If you do purchase that throwback, you will be able to um, see that tutorial on what to use. Okay, you guys, I am going to just look back through here and see what you guys are saying about um, the project today. Uh, I am seeing brights. Let's see. I should have paid more attention. Okay, I see brights. It looks like more brights. Okay, you guys, you have one out. We are going to do the bright project. And um, like I said, I'll pick two winners. So if you would like to have one of these, please just in the comments say, I would love to have one of these originals. So, and I will, uh, we'll pick a winner and um, I will send that to you. Okay, let's get going. I'm gonna switch my camera around and let's get to the project here. Everything's always just a little wonky till I get it set up. So thank you for bearing with me on that. Let me make sure I have this straight. And we can see our project on here. Let me show you what I'm going to be using. So this green, uh, we don't have it on our website, but I am going to... Um, I'm going to get with Leah and get it on her next order because I just really love this. If you can get it somewhere else, you know, that's perfectly fine. We are going to have it on our website. I absolutely love it. It's a Tombow 173. So uh, we are, we're going to try to get that onto our next order. And so we should have that in a couple of weeks or so. 
but I love, love, love this. And it's this really, really bright, vivid green, which I think just kind of brightens up everything. The other color is the orange. And those of you who have been following Kendra with the color wheel theory, you will know that these two colors are excellent together. I've also thrown in some red and, um, and then of course the neutrals with the green. So uh, I've, I've tucked in uh, some little characters. Now, you know, there are new characters with the foundation. So those absolutely will work in these little containers. But I also want you to know that you can go back and choose your little characters from previous releases and you can use those in here as well, okay? So I always like to go back to things that we've already released because uh, I want you to know that these things are very versatile and uh, you can go back to those. Okay, so let me just uh, zoom in here a little bit more. Uh, I know this is kind of a big, this is a big stamp, so I wanna get as close as I can so that you can see it. Now I've gone ahead and stamped it because uh, just for time's sake and because it is so big and it's so much easier to just have this pre-stamped. Now I, all I did was ink it the way that we normally ink everything and that's a 565 and a 969. So blue first and then brown on this one. And then I stamped it off because I'm using these bright, bright, vivid colors and I want to make sure they really show up. So I don't, I don't need to have too much color in those lines you know, that are coming out. Now the difference with this one, and you can see how muted these colors are, this is much more neutral. And, and we do want the darker lines because we're pulling more of this neutral color out, this combination of the brown and the blue. So in that case, you would just stamp it off maybe one time. And do you see these little blotchy areas here? Uh, this is really, this is really what you want because this gives you a big variation of color, especially when you're doing these neutrals, uh, because they're going to come out that way. They're going to come out with a little bit of color, and it's going to kind of, um, it's going to kind of give you that natural look where you can, you know, where you can see it, and the color's just a little bit blotchy. It's not too perfect, I guess. That's what I'm trying to say because we don't want it to look like a stamp. You know, I say that all the time, but really that's the goal. We want this to look like a painting when it's finished. We don't want anyone to look at it and say, oh, wow, you stamped that. Nope, we don't want them to know that that's what we did. So when the color is a little blotchy, so when you stamp this, you know, when you ink it, especially on the clear stamps, when you ink it, this is what we're looking for is this kind of little, you know, more of a blotchy look. And then even as I... Um, stamp that off, I've still got some of that in here. So it's really, really, it's a really good thing. Don't don't look at that and think, oh, I didn't stamp this evenly and now it's not gonna stamp right. Uh, no, it will and it's gonna look great. It's gonna look great. So uh, if you guys really want to see this, uh, we are doing the bright colors today, but if you wanna see a muted tutorial like this, just put it in the comments. I can come back and do that. And, uh, you know, I can do it with the chairs or I can do it with any of the other ones. And I'll, um, I'll actually post a picture of this on Facebook so that you have a reference, even though we aren't actually doing this one today. Okay, uh, that being said, we are going to get started on this little tutorial. I absolutely love these foundations, and I, but I also love putting the scenes together. I love both, and I don't know which one I love more, probably both equally. Uh, I love that you can make this your own. Even though everything is sort of included in here, you are making this your own, and every time you stamp it, I mean, we're doing this tutorial, but I guarantee you it's going to look way different by the time time I'm finished because it just never looks the same. And that's also uh, the cool thing about this technique. It really is an original and that's why we sign it because it's your own work. It really, really is and your own style will come out. So let me show you what else we are using here. Now I went back to this mini critter set and I picked a couple of these out. I picked the little cat here, the sleeping cat and the little dog. And you know, you could use any of these little guys sleeping in here. They'd be so cute. Put this little bunny in here too. That'd be really cute. So any of these little critters are gonna work in here. So I love that you can go back and use things that you have. Uh, in this one, I chose this one here. 
this little it's got the little blooms and the little grass underneath uh, of course our um, beginning watercolor flower and foliage sets we're going to use things from here so the vine and if you want to put this outside of course you can use the little grass on the bottom we're going to do something a little bit different this time so the vine and then here in the uh, flower set the little filler flower this one in the foliage set three so i'm going to use these grasses uh, depending on which direction they're going so one of these two and then the mini flower set, the long stem here. And then possibly these little dots too, we could use those too. So, um, you know, like I said, and I, you know, if I grab something else that I wasn't anticipating grabbing, I will tell you so that you can, um, you can look that up. Okay, enough chatter and let's get going on this little project. And it is so fun to do. I absolutely love it. And I've had so much fun and that's why I couldn't decide um, which way to go. Okay, so we're going to start out by pulling the color out of the lines. That's our go-to. That's how we start everything. Now this is, this is going to be pretty light because I have stamped this off two times. So I want this light. And the reason I did that is because I'm using these bright, bright colors. So I want this three-dimensional look always. I want to be able to see that, um, you know, that concrete look but I also wanna add some really bright colors to it. So if that's the case, you wanna stamp it off. If you, you know, if you find that you are stamping these things and they're just, they're too dark, you're getting too much color in the lines, it's an easy, easy fix. Just stamp it off. Just stamp it off. Stamp it off on a piece of watercolor paper. That's also really important, not cardstock, but watercolor paper. And the reason we do that is because the cardstock will absorb all the color and you will have nothing left so you want to be sure to stamp it off on a scrap piece of watercolor paper okay I'm just putting a shadow underneath here this is just a little stool with this overhang so we're gonna have a shadow there now these little areas that are super thin we don't want to do too much with those because we don't really want to muddy these up too much we want to make sh make sure we have enough room for that bright color so we don't really need to do too much. The leg, when you're doing chairs like this, the leg in the back is always going to be dark. And that will be the indicator that it's in the back. So that will always be dark. And I'm just gonna kinda come in around this. There's not a lot uh, to do with these, especially when the lines are really thin. So I'm just kind of carefully um, just pulling this color out. I'm going alongside the lines, you know, like we always do, uh, to make sure that we're not actually making the lines thicker, we're just drawing that color out. So here's the leg in the back, that's going to be darker. And you can see already that that just kind of sets it back into the into the background. Now, uh, yesterday, Kendra, Kendra was on twice, so she also did her Back to Basics and did a shading tutorial for structures. It was so good. And uh, she sort of created a reference, a little reference sheet that you could go back to and look to see where the shadows would be, things that are overhanging, uh, things that are below. It was a really good instructional. So if you haven't watched that, you might wanna check that out. That is on Facebook and will be on YouTube as well. But um, if you're just starting out, some of these little tricks and rules are really, really important. And I don't always have time to get to them or I don't explain them thoroughly you know, in these more complex tutorials. So if you're new to this and maybe feeling a little intimidated, check out those Back to Basics. It's called Back to Basics, it's with Kendra, and she goes through really, really simple projects and goes back to those rules that really help you uh, be successful because the little things make all the difference, you guys. You can do this, this is so fun. And if you think, I have never been an artist, I've never been able to do this kind of work, you will be surprised at what you are able to do. It really, really works and it's so fun. And I promise you, the more that you do it, the better you're going to get. You're gonna see that improvement 
and you're gonna fall in love with this technique. It is so fun. And you know, for those of you who are about rules, this is for you because it really is about the rules. And one of them is not coloring on the line. You wanna color next to the line or below the line so that you're pulling that color out and you're creating a ridge. That's basically what you're doing. You're creating a shadow under here that will bring this, uh, this section out. And you can see how uh, three-dimensional this looks already just by pulling this color out of the lines. And that's why we always start uh, this way. We always start by pulling the color out and then we go on to the next step. And in this case, uh, let's start with uh, adding the foliage and everything into these little containers. And I'm going to start with the flowers. I love this this orange, it's actually, um, it's almost like a really deep yellow. It's the 933, I really, really love this. And uh, I especially love it with the green. It's just so cute. It's almost like a neon green. So here is the 933. I'm just going to start uh, putting this color in. And, and you know, in order to keep things balanced, you kind of want to add, you know, it into at least two areas. So I'm just gonna ink this up and just start over here. Now this line is pretty thin because I've stamped it off. So I can stamp over that line and not worry about uh, that line showing through. And you can see in the image, these lines are missing. So the chair isn't complete. And that's so that you have room to add in your flowers and foliage without fighting these lines and stamping over the top. So I'm adding some down in here and you know, we can always come back and add some later. So I'm going to switch out this color now and I'm just using a, a baby wipe and I'm just going to clean this off and pick up a purple. Now this is the 636. So I'm going to pick up some of this. Now, you know, with stamping, you don't have to ink the whole stamp. So I'm going to do a smaller bloom in this little pot in here. So it's the same thing. We're stamping this in a repeat. And what that means is you're stamping it over and over again in a circle or in a pattern so that you get the light to the dark. It's really, really important that you do that. If you just, um, if you just ink this up and stamp it like this, you see how definite those blooms are? It's not going to give us the same look as this will when we add the water to it. So we want to stamp it in a pattern like this. Okay, so let's add some purple now in here, maybe into this one on the side because we're gonna put that little cat in here. And actually, maybe we should do that next. Put the little cat and the dog in here so that we have space. So let's just do that right now before we go any farther. And I'm going to uh, use my positioner place my little acrylic shield in here. And if you did not hear on the uh, on one of the other tutorials, we now have these little acrylic plates in a larger size. These are now available in a four by six. So for those big stamps that you need to position uh, and these little plates were, are just too small, you can now buy the plates by itself. And you can go to the website. I think they're about 275, something like that. So they're very inexpensive. They work the exact same way. They just fit into the corner. It's just that you have more space now um, to stamp your image. So I'm going to uh, ink this one with the two colors. So let's go with the blue first. And then the brown over the top. And then I'm going to take a scrap piece and stamp that off and then stamp it into my... Now I'm going to stamp it in this little container here and you can see it could be hanging over the lip a little bit. So I'm just gonna use a piece of post-it tape and just kind of cover that lip. So now I don't have to worry about that cat being stamped over the top of that. And I wanna make sure that I can see the edge of that um, that little pot so I can see where exactly he's going. So let me just stamp this in here. Now it's okay to stamp him over that flower that I just put in. We can tuck him back in here a little bit. That's okay. He's pretty light and we're not going to see it. Uh, we're not going to see it on there. So I'm going to drop him down so that he's not stamped over that, 
the the um, the railing on the chair. Just give it a huff. And now when we pull this away, we've got him inside the pot and down below this line where this chair was. So he just fits perfectly in there. And this little guy, let's tuck him under the chair and I'll show you how to make it look like he's kind of under the chair. So we're gonna ink this in two colors again. So we're going to do the, um, the blue first. And then we're gonna do the brown over the top and we're gonna do the same thing. We're going to stamp him off onto a piece of scrap paper. See how dark that is? That is never gonna work on here. It's too dark. We're gonna get too much color and too dark of a line. So these little critters, you know, really look so much better when they are stamped off. So we're gonna kind of tuck him right under this chair here, just like this. Huff on that. Now, here's something that I do, and I should probably uh, kind of explain this a little bit. So when I place this in here, I've got it in position. I place this back, remove my acrylic plate, and now I'm going to go in here and stamp my image. I always remove the T-bar before I lift the stamp. Uh, it's just, it's, it's, just it's, a, it's a really good trick because it will make sure that you're getting good even pressure. Sometimes with this in here, your, your hand can be on the edge. Uh, you can rock it a little bit. But if you place this down, remove your T-bar, and then give it the pressure, even pressure, you're going to find that you, are, um, you have a much better result. So I just kind of do that as a habit. And I don't know if I've ever explained that to anyone. So there you go. Okay, so we've got our little guys in here. Let's continue on with the flowers. Let's get those in. And um, I think I, let's, let's, do, let's do this one because this one also is purple. So let's do this one. It's two colors. So uh, the blooms and then the green. Now I'm just using I'm just using random greens, whichever one I pick up. It's either going to be a 177 or it's going to be a 249, and they're really interchangeable. So I try to just add both of them in here. Now I don't need to ink this whole thing, and I'm going to since I'm going to put it in this pot, I'm going to cover this also, just like we did here, and make sure that I'm not stamping over the top. And I just want to stamp that in there a couple of times. Okay. Okay, now let's do the foliage. And once we get that in, we can add the water. When you're doing a large combination like this, uh, I think it actually works better to get all of your elements in first and then add the water. It sort of blends everything up a little bit better. Now that's totally up to you. That's just something that I do. But you know, by all means, if you want to add water with each application, you most certainly can do that. So let's get some of this bright green in. I absolutely love, have I told you guys that? I really love, I really love this bright green. And I, you know, I just haven't used it in a really long time and I tend to pick up the same colors. And so um, I just, you know, I just picked it up because I really love that bright orange. And I um, just kind of picked up this green and it's just so cute. I just love it. Now I stamped that in there a few times. I just used the vine. This was the, the basic vine. And I'm going to put in, maybe I'll just put in a little bit more in here. And um, let's probably, let's just put a little bit in here too. We can always add some more things to that, um, to that composition. Okay, so I'm gonna switch out the greens now and maybe do, um, maybe do something going up the chair here into this little pot. So let's use, Let's use this one and just kind of grow this up here like this. And then we can just kind of kind of grow it out like this. So it's kind of out over the tree. Now you can see I stamped over the top of this. That's okay because we can either grow something down over it or we can wash it out. So we can, we can deal with that. That's not gonna be a problem. Now I'm using the smaller vine, this one. And I'm just adding a little uh, foliage to this. 
just kind of, you know, as much as you, you want to add. And let's see, where else we need to put something? How about up over here, over this little, this little cat? And kind of grow something up there. And, you know, as you go, you'll kind of see where, you know, maybe there's some empty spots and you want to add something in. And you can always go back and do that. But, you know, I would always, uh, what I do too is I always pick my colors first. So I kind of lay them out like this and just kind of look at them and kind of decide what colors I want to go together. Look how bright these are. These are so bright. And actually this red, when it's taken from the palette, you know, with a first coat is really pink. It's so cute. So I, I'm actually using it more like a pink this time. Uh, let's see, what else do we want to put in here? How about some uh, grasses? Let's just use some of this. Now you can use this one. Um, you could use this one. You could use this one. So these are all different little grasses that you can use in here. Uh, because it's going this direction, I'm just going to use this one. And just kind of stamp it over the top. And maybe I'll just put some in here as well. Um, you can put some up above, kind of growing out over the top like that. And I think maybe we're ready to add um, some water. Actually, let's do one more thing here. Let's do this bright. So this is a the tiny little accent grass, and I'm just going to kind of grow this out. Looks like this cat is in the middle of the pot, and everything is kind of going every direction. So let's just make it look like that. And let's see, is there anywhere else we need to put anything right now? I don't think so. So let's go ahead and add some water now to this. I'm gonna use my brush, my number four. And then start with the lightest colors. So that would be, you know, our oranges and just kind of dab. You can see how cute this color is, just so cute. And, you know, stamping it in the repeat like that really gives you, um, you know, that three-dimensional look. You wouldn't, you know, this distance, you wouldn't actually see each individual bloom super clear. So you're kind of just seeing it, um, you know, as an abstract, which really is, you know, kind of what watercolor is, just the idea of things. So you, you just want to make sure that you are uh, leaving enough white space so I'm adding that, um, the grass in here now and just dabbing. Just kind of dabbing. Don't be afraid to kind of go outside the lines. You've got, you've got ink on your, on your brush so you can add a little color outside of the lines. That's okay. And then, you know, when it's grasses, you can kind of follow those lines. So you can kind of direct this, this grass the way you want it to. And that changes it up. Again, we're trying, to, we're trying to change things up so that they don't look the same. Okay, that's starting to look pretty good. I love it. Okay, so let's move on from here. Let's do our little, our little critters. And these are going to be very, very simple. We're just adding a little bit of color and I think I'm gonna leave this little cat white because I've got so much color around him that I can just leave him white and he's gonna just, he's gonna pop. And then this little guy, we can do the same. Maybe color his ears in a little darker. And just kind of follow these lines, it doesn't, you know, we don't have to do much with these guys at all. And then I'm going to take my twin tone. So this is the brown twin tone. And I'm going to get his little eyes in and his nose. And this, this little guy too. So cute. Let me hold that up so you can see. See how that just really pops out when you kind of accent their features? You know, you, you're getting the, um, 
you know, the life of the character is just in the eyes. And when you really, really pop those eyes out, it's just, it's so cute. Okay, so let's get going on to these chairs and let's add some color to them. So we're going to get some color on our palette. This is the 933. So let me see if I can fit everything on here. This is a 933. And then here's the bright green. And this is a 173. And then we've got the red. And this is an 885. It doesn't, it can be any red. It really can. I mean, I picked the 885 because I also like the um, the pink, that it, that it kind of makes a pink. And then let's do um, some of the purple right under here. And this is a 636. Hope you guys can see that okay. And we're gonna we're gonna um, add some color now to the rest of these these little things. So let's start out with the chairs and let's get some of this orange onto this one. And we're just gonna brush it on. Leave that highlight at the very top. You know, you just want to leave that highlight and go in between each section, even if they're small. Try to stay in between each section and just kind of brush this on. I can't tell you how important that is to just stay in each section. And we can come back and add more color to that and make it darker. Every pass is going to be a little darker. And then I'm gonna leave the chair, the seat of the chair, white. And then just get this little edge purple and then hit the legs. Again, stay in, um, stay in those sections. And this little chair leg back here is kind of hidden back here. So let's go back in and make another pass. I just think of these chairs because they're, you know, they're really, the style is really cute and they're really different of as bright colors. I don't know why I do that, but I just think, of, I just think they should be really bright. And this was the first one I did. And then after I did it, I thought, you know, these could also be really cute muted. So let's try that one. I just, you know, I mean, it's really fun to try different things, you know, and especially, you know, when I'm out and about, I, things inspire me. So I notice things and you'll, you'll kind of, you'll kind of see that the more that you do this kind of art, the more that you do watercolor, the more that you mix colors and put things together, you'll notice things, you know, when you're in a flower shop or you're driving by a, you know, a flower bouquet or some, you know, beautiful potted arrangement, you're going to notice that and pay attention to it and think, oh, I like how they put that tall thing in the background and those things that hang over the side. And what kind of flower is that? Can I make that? And you really, um, it's really fun because um, I take a lot of screenshots and I take a lot of, of pictures of things that I see because it really does inspire me. And I also think that makes it really, really fun too. So, okay, I've cleaned my brush off now. Let's go to the green. And how cool is this green? It's so cute. And I'm just kind of going in between here where these little vines are. I don't want to wash them out too much, but I do want to get that green in here behind. And just kind of brush it on. This really is the fun part. You know, when you see these things all kind of come together and when you understand how to stamp things, you know, and you've got the composition, um, it takes kind of takes the stress away, makes it just fun. So again, I'm staying inside, I'm staying inside the lines and painting each section separate, including these little decorative things on the legs. And I'm going to I'm going to add a little dark green here to my palette. So this is the this is the 177 and I'm just going to do the seat um a contrasting color here. Just to kind of mix it up a little bit. Okay. 
And we can use this to, um, to do something decorative on here. So maybe we wanna just add something, something decorative and, you know, maybe a, maybe some little lines, some little detail here like this. This kind of thing is really fun. We could take that dark too, this dark green, and just kind of add a line under here. Because this piece of the, this part of the chair would kind of come forward a little bit and we can kind of create that, that idea. Okay, so that looks pretty good. Let's go on to the next one. And we're going to leave this one more white. So that means we're gonna to have to have some blue onto our palette. And that would be the 565. Because, you know, the rule with white is that it's never uncolored. It's always going to have color and, you know, it's going to have a shadow. Otherwise, it's going to look flat. So we're going to add some blue now to this one, especially on the seat, because this would, this would have a shadow on the seat. And we could do it really lightly. Just kind of along the side and you can see how that makes it look more three-dimensional you always want to kind of just muddy it up a little bit like so and then we can add some detail with this one because wow, that looks a little boring. So let's add some detail to this one and let's use this red. So I'm going to just take some of this red and you know, for me, it's always easier to start in the middle, you know, when you're doing something like this and then you work your way to the side. It's not quite so intimidating as far as keeping it even. But you see how, um, you know, when you're, when you're using red and it's really, when, you're, when, you're, when it's watered down, it's going to look pink. And you can, you know, obviously do as much of this as you want. But see how cute that is? Just kind of dresses it up a little bit. Makes it look more fun. You know those... Um, I'm sure a lot of you are familiar with Mary Inglebright. This kind of reminds me of her. She has these just cute things like this with all these little stripes and dots and bright colors. And I've always just loved her, loved her style. So it does kind of remind me a little bit about that too. Okay, so we've got a lot of color going on here. So we don't need a lot of color in the pots. Um, you know, something has to be a little neutral when you've got all this color going on. If you were going to make these pots really bright colors and stripes and patterns, you want to mute the chairs a little bit, or you want to mute the greenery and not have too much color in there. So if you have, if you have bright, bright chairs, bright, bright pots, bright, bright flowers, you really don't know where to look. It's just almost a bit too much. So uh, we're going to keep these pots, these little pots, very simple as far as color. Now we can do some patterns on them, but we want to keep them pretty simple. And that to me just means keeping them mostly white. So you always want to start on the, um, on the edge and just kind of drag that color to the center. And the same with this little guy. We're going to add that color to the side. And then now with a chair, we're gonna keep this white. So let's just, you know, add some little lines in here. That sort of gives you the impression that this, this little thing here is kind of hanging over and it's just, it's creating these little shadows and sh different lines. And so um, it's okay. So I'm just gonna kind of wash this, this little line out a little bit here. And we might, I might add some, you know, a little foliage or something in here just to kind of break this up. But you see how that pretty much washes out. Okay. 
This is such um, an important part, you know, putting shadows in. And it, it can be a little intimidating, but um, don't, you know, let yourself stress out about it. If you think about anything that overhangs, if you think about the light coming directly down, anything that's under that, that would create a lip. You know, for example, this little pot, see how this sort of comes out farther? That's going to create a shadow. So this, this would have a shadow under it. And you see how that creates uh, something that comes forward because you're creating the shadow here. That's, that's the reason that we pull the color out of the lines instead of tracing the lines is because we're doing this exact thing. We're popping this out and bringing it forward. So if you just think about it, kind of think about it like that, you know, make sure things that are round, you know, contoured are darker on the sides. And, I, and if you just do those things, you're going to have something that has a contour and something that is um, that is showing a shadow. Even just that, even that part, even if you don't get necessarily get everything else perfect. If you draw that shadow under a lip and you put a shadow um, underneath. Now see in here, this is going to have a shadow underneath. And actually, depending on where that light is, you know, if it's farther over this way, it's going to elongate this shadow. And, you know, any of these things kind of hanging off are going to have a bit of a shadow too. And that's just a matter of like some little squiggly lines. This back in here, because that's really back in the background, we may come in with that and just use a twin tone and really, really darken this in here. And even maybe even just in here too. And just kind of, you know, muddy this up a little bit. You know, it's always going to have shadows and things kind of coming across here. So now as we're kind of working our way over, let's just add a little brown to this little guy's ear since we're just right here. And I'm just using the dark brown, so it, it really doesn't matter. He's so tiny that we're just giving him a little color. Now we want to, if we, if we want to look like he's kind of tucked back under the, under the chair, we want to give him a shadow right over the top of him. Just like that. And it will look like he's back under this chair. And this too would have kind of an elongated shadow here with maybe some little and this guy too he's going to have a little shadow next to him just like that and we can just kind of keep working our way over again we've got a little lip under this pot so this is going to have a shadow And here too, this one too. So let's add, let's start adding a little bit of color to these things. Uh, I'm gonna take some green and uh, maybe this cool green and add some color to this pot. It's kind of off to the side, so it's we can add a little color here to this one. And maybe just a um, maybe we'll just make something like this. Still want to see a bit of a highlight there. You know, it's going to be, you know, darker on the side, always. And then maybe uh, just a little stripe here like this. And I'm going to take my twin tone and make some little, little water holes like that. 
We're also going to have a shadow here, this guy. It's gonna have a shadow and then, you know, that little arm coming out. You know, it's just that don't worry if it's if it's not perfect or you're not quite sure how exactly it would be. It's okay. You're just giving the idea that there's a shadow, that these things are sitting on the ground and there's a little shadow there. Let's add um, some lines here. Let's add something decorative. So let's take some of this green and um, let's add something decorative. You know, when you're adding these lines, always make sure that you have some sort of bend in it so that it looks like it's, um, it's a rounded container. So I'm gonna take some of this red now, turn my palette again. I'm gonna take some of this red and maybe I'll make something on here. Uh, you can, you know, obviously make whatever patterns that you want. And again, you'll start noticing things. You'll start paying attention to things and, you know, think, oh, I really like that decorative thing on that pot. And so you can just go in there and try to duplicate it. Let's see. Let's do, let's just do a little more of this red over here. Okay, that looks pretty good. I think maybe we need something else in this little area here. So maybe we'll just go in with some of this grass. And just stamp in some of this. Kind of fill that little empty spot up. And pull that color out. Just pull it out. Let's do something else over here. Maybe we add a long stem now. And I'm just using the purple. This is that little tiny long stem. Just a single little bloom. And we can just kind of stamp it in here, however. And maybe, do we have room for that somewhere else? Maybe up in here too. I just, you know, when I'm doing these things, I just get all my, <laughs> I get all my flowers, all my foliages out, and I just kind of lay them out and just grab, just grab things. Kind of, you know, like a little accent. You know, when you put these in later, after everything is done, um, they look more like an accent. Where else do we need something? Maybe we just use, maybe we use some of these. This is from that Bible journaling set too, which I really, just really love these little, these new little guys. Let's see, where can we put this one? I mean, you can just really go crazy and fill everything. But you know, if you send this to somebody, I mean, who wouldn't be cheered up by this? You know, sending something like this, something bright, colorful, and happy. And then I would, you know, I always go in and kind of drag the color out and create some sort of background here. Just kind of pull that color to the side and you know, kind of muddy it up a little bit. Okay, now uh, here's another thing that you can do. Now it, it sort of looks, looks like this kind of floating out in space. You can ground this really simply uh, we've got a lot going on here, so we don't really need to do a lot in the background. We don't want to really distract from what we've got here, but you can take your, um, your ruler, 
your ruler and a pencil. And you just wanna go up high enough. You see where the, the highest uh, leg is that's on the ground? You know, this is even just a little bit higher. You wanna go, make sure you're above that. And just pencil in a line in the background. So I'm just gonna take, take a pencil here, make sure this is straight. It looks like it is. It's pretty close. And just kind of draw a line, you know, get it in between, just slightly, in between the legs here, here. And you can see you've got a, you've got a little reference here where that, where that back is. You could even go up one just a little bit higher and create sort of a um, the look of a the molding on the floor. And just kind of follow it over. And once you've done that, you can drag some of this color, you know, out kind of along the bottom of the floor here. kind of indicates where that floor comes to the wall. Make sure I got my legs in here, this little chair. So you can see that you kind of have a little background, you know, where you can kind of see the floor behind here. And just kind of bring this color out. Okay, so cute. Drag this out, look it over, see if there's anything else you need to add or want to add, and then sign and date. Okay, and I'm gonna do exactly that. I'm gonna sign it and date it, and then I will switch my camera around. And then, you know, just kind of, you know, I, I do this too. So just kind of look and see where there's, if there's anywhere that you can, you know, really darken something. And just, you know, give it a little more dimension. I think that looks pretty good. And I think we are finished with this little project. So let me switch my camera around and we can do our recap here. Hello everyone, I'm back. Um, okay, so I just wanted to go over the deal of the day one more time with you. Uh, it starts today. So go to the homepage, you'll see the big banner that says deal of the day, click that and you will see what is on sale today, at least 50% off and hint is it is a watercolor set. So even more fun and uh, it will be something new every day, every 24 hours, there will be something new beginning at 12 a.m. Pacific time. And these will be items, this will be one SKU that will be deeply discounted. So you'll wanna check back every day and just see what's for sale. So I hope you're exci as excited about it as we are. We're excited to bring it to you and make this available to you. Uh, does anybody have any questions about the project I just did? Uh, if you would like to have it, uh, just leave, leave it in the comments that you would like to have it. I will uh, wait a couple of days to pick a winner in case those of you who are watching this, um, are not watching this live, will have a chance to comment on there. So, uh, check out the, uh, also check out the tutorial for the throwback, um, pro easy project B. So this one right here with the lighthouse, Kendra's little project she did, and she actually did two. So she kind of put this one on the top and actually did this one too. Isn't that cute? Love it. Super, super fun and, and just as easy as all the other projects are. So you'll have to check that out too. Check us out, of course, on Instagram, 
me on uh, Bi Bonnie Krebs Bible Journaling. So I am on there with Bible Journaling and Journaling. So you can do this technique in a book or a journal, um, any book actually. So there's lots more incentive there. Even if you don't journal in a Bible, there's still more watercolor and more inspiration on that. Of course, check us out on Pinterest, uh, um, our Facebook, our Instagram, our YouTube. We're just all over the place, you guys. And Kendra is on every Tuesday at 5 o'clock for Bounton to Basics. That's Pacific time. I am on every Wednesday. And next Wednesday will be another new release. So I will have something brand new to show you guys next week. I am so excited to show it to you, I think. You're gonna love it. So um, meet me next week, next Wednesday, 10 a.m. Pacific time. And um, I will see you guys all then. Thank you so much for your comments. Thanks for joining me. Thanks for watching. And thanks for supporting us. We appreciate you all so much. Okay, if there's no questions, I don't see any questions on here. I will sign off. Um, Okay, I don't see any questions. If you have any, leave them in the comments. I'll check back later in the comments um, and answer your questions. So thank you all so much, and I'll see you next week.